This perfectionism drives us in Germany, this need to be perfect. But I had the question, does that perfectionism actually make us happier and more successful? This is fantastic that I finally get to do a keynote in English. I've been doing keynotes all over in German, so this is absolutely fantastic. And thanks for that fantastic introduction. Wow, that sounded like a Hollywood success story, or what? Sure did. But the truth is that there was actually a lot that happened on the road from here to here. One of these photos is a photo from me on my donkey Ruth on our ranch in Texas when I was three years old. And one of those pictures is a picture of me today. And what you heard with this great introduction is only half of the story. There were a lot of failures along that way, a lot. Let's see, there was divorce. Okay, two divorces. There was a failed postdoc. There were a lot of embarrassing moments. There were burnouts, okay, two burnouts. And there were a lot of embarrassing things that happened to me along that way. But those other bits and pieces that weren't in my moderation text are the things that make me the perfectly imperfect person that I am today. I moved to Germany in 2002 to follow my career. I was working in the pharmaceutical industry. And I moved from Austin, Texas, to Zollingen, Germany. <laughs> yeah, anybody here from Zollingen? <laughs> Woo! Maybe it wasn't the best place for a Texas girl that didn't speak any German at the time. <laughs> But anyway, I was really excited to be here in Germany, the land of opportunities for an American girl. And I had taken a big risk to come here. I had quit my job that I'd worked on very hard at. I had divorced my husband. I had sold my house and the cat and I landed in Zollingen, Germany for this job. <laughs> and this job turned out to be a huge disaster, and 18 months later, I quit my job. Then I was unemployed, living as an illegal alien in Germany, and I didn't even speak the language. It couldn't get any worse, or so I thought. But what I learned along that way was what makes me the person I am today. Regardless of what happened, I wanted to stay in Germany. And at this point, as an illegal alien in Germany, back then you couldn't just stay, I had, to, I had basically four cho choices. Either go back to Texas and ask for my job, my house, and my husband back, <laughs> or get a job in Germany and make a lot less money and start off at the beginning again with my career, or get married to a German, and you heard about my success rate with that already, <laughs> or start my own company, and that's ultimately what I decided to do. And I've had the privilege of spending the last 17 years delivering motivational keynotes in about 23 different countries. And I've spent the last 10 years focusing on two topics in Germany, and that is what makes us happy and what makes us successful. And it's very interesting because a lot of people think the road to success looks like that, straight up, just a straight line to the top, the perfect way. But the reality is, <laughs> is that's what it looks like. It's got a lot of ups and downs and curves and twists. Does anybody know what that part in the middle is called? Innovation, failure, learning. And I want to ask you a question, and it's a multiple choice question. I want you to keep the answer in your mind because I'm going to show you that I've actually asked this question to a lot of people in Germany. I want to know if A, your way to success or the way to reaching your goals today looks like this first graph, always straight up to the top, or B, if your way to success, the way to meet your goals looks like the second graph with lots of ups and downs and curves, and You had an inner critic in your, always in your mind saying, it could have been better, it should have been better, it could have been faster, you could have done that better. Or C, you're more balanced and your way to the top looks like this graph on the right, but you had no inner critic at any time that said it could have been better. You got your answer in your mind? I happen to ask this question to more than 24,508 German-speaking people. And it seems that the people that say that their way to the top is absolutely per perfect is very few. 
The majority of us, our way to the top has all these curves and these bends, and we have this very loud inner critic that says it could have been better. And a few of us are well-balanced, had a happy childhood, we meditate every day, and we're really happy with the results that we get regardless of what they are. It's very interesting, though, that this part in the middle, that's what defines our life. And it's what you do with the part in the middle that counts. Do you stop? Do you keep going? Or does that part in the middle create so much anxiety that we don't even start? I found that to be the case a lot of times, too. So when I moved to Germany in 2002, there were a lot of things that surprised me. I only have a little bit of time up here, so I'm going to just tell you about three, okay? The first one, every time I would get on the Autobahn, people would go by me and do this all the time. And I didn't know what that was. I thought they were trying to tell me about washing my face or putting my makeup. But then I realized it had to do with the fact that I'm a really terrible driver. <laughs> Second thing that surprised me is that we live in a very difficult culture. It seemed like every time I would try to do something, there was somebody there that always told me that I was doing it wrong, that it could have been done better, or here's how you actually do it, Renee. And you know what? I don't actually need that because I fall into that B category of people. I have a very strong inner critic that motivates me myself. And all of this criticism was new to me in Germany, and it actually had an effect on my self-esteem and on my motivation. The third thing, that surprised me very much when I moved to Germany is the fact that many of us are not willing to take very many risks. That this topic of failure is unlike the topic of failure in America, where we take a lot of risks and we know that everybody can be president of the United States <laughs> if you try hard enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and heute, thank you. And heute, that seat so ours. It looks that way today. So, this perfectionism drives us in Germany, this need to be perfect. But I had the question, does that perfectionism actually make us happier and more successful? I don't know about that. But what I do know is that happiness, 50% of your happiness is genetically defined. It's in your genes. 10% of your happiness comes from the way that your brain perceives the world and what happens in your circumstances. And another 40% of your happiness is under your conscious control and you can do something about it. So I know you might be sitting there and saying, hey, I got cheated on that happiness gene part. The 50% is kind of low. You don't have to worry about that because as it turns out, the other 10% plus that 40% actually regulates the genetic part of your happiness. So the reality is, is that you actually do have the choice to create your own happiness. So how do we do that? How do we get around all of the perfectionism and this inner critic? Well, first we have to understand something, and that's where does this inner critic live? It's very interesting that the inner critic lives in our subconscious mind. And what's even more interesting is that only 10% of what you think, do, act, the way you behave, what you believe, comes from your conscious part of your mind, the rational part of your mind. That means that the other 90% of what you think, act, do, behave, believe, comes from your unconscious mind or your subconscious mind, that part of your brain that you think you might not have control over. And the subconscious mind and unconscious mind is so incredibly powerful, we know now that it's capable of processing 11 million pieces of information per second. That's a lot, isn't it? That means everything in this room is going into your brain at the rate of 11 million bits per second. The conscious mind is only able to process information at about 40 bits per second. See the unequal distribution about what's going on in your unconscious mind? So, very interestingly, we also know that our brain architecture, we have seven times more structures in our brain to recognize danger. Run away from the danger, run away from the risks. And that ensured our survival till today. 
It's a seven to one danger to positive. So what that means is that we are predetermined to be focused on what's negative. And what that also means is, is that we have to work hard to reframe the positive in our life. And I'm going to talk about how we do that. You know, it's worth doing because your brain on positive is 31% more productive than your brain on negative and neutral. Everything's just better. So I'm going to do a couple of reframing exercises with you. And did everybody get one of these purple cards at the door? I'm going to do a reframing exercise with you and show you how this works, that you actually have control over your own happiness. Somebody tell me, what do you see on this slide? What's, what's this a picture of? A pig. A pig. Clear. Yeah. A happy pig. A pig that got a lot of the happy genes, right? Okay. What do you think of when you see this pig? Happiness. Schnitzel. <laughs> okay, what does a Muslim see when they look at this picture? What does a vegetarian think of when they see this picture? What does a farmer see when they see this picture? What does a child see when they see this picture? Every single person has a different frame around their experiences with everything in their life. And it's very interesting, where do all of these experiences start, start coming into the subconscious mind? Experts say it's between the ages of four and seven years old. We go out in the world and we say, hey, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be an architect, and someone says, you can't. You can't do it because you're a girl, you can't do it because you're poor, you can't do it because you're German, you can't do it because you have 13 fingers on your left hand, you can't do it. <laughs> we hear a lot of that in Germany, yeah? And that's where this frame for our life starts to be built. We have a frame about what we see on this picture, just like we have a frame around every experience that we experience, every circumstance in our life. I want to give you an example, which to me was quite surprising. I prepared a keynote for the best of neuroscience back in December in Berlin, and this example was kind of surprising when I did my research. I think everybody knows this song. <laughs> we all know that song, right? And because this is an English keynote, I translated it. The, 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 who, what, why, who, who, how, what, why, 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 lots of good grammar in there. Who does not ask remains stupid. And that's the part that shocked me, and I thought, that's crass. That means, okay, it's good to ask questions. I have no problem with that. But what we're saying is, you are a child and you're stupid. And you're gonna stay stupid if you don't ask questions. Crass, order? <laughs> wow, and we all accepted that as part of our reality. That's a part of every one of our frames in Germany. Let me play now for you the American song. And if you have that purple card in front of you, you can read along with the song. Okay, positive, right? Yeah. yeah, positive, but why not? In America, we value positive thinking. We value a strong self-confidence. And that's what goes into 
our subconscious mind. It's all of these things that you have to watch out for that go into your subconscious mind. And we know now that it takes five positive experiences to replace a negative experience. So what I want you to do is to practice this Sesame Street song at home at least five times. And what I want you to do is turn to your neighbor and say, you are smart, you are clever, you are valuable. Go. Super. 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 <laughs> Keep working on that. But I wanted to point out two other things to you, or three other things to you that I've noticed with all the people that I work together with in Germany. There's a lot more that comes in from our environment into our frame. We think a lot that we can't do something in Germany unless we have a degree. I don't have enough experience. I can't start my own business. I can't do this thing. I'm not the expert because I don't have a degree or a certificate. And that's very uniquely German. You don't have to have a certificate or a PhD to be the best at something. Something else is, um, I don't want to talk about how good my day was or how successful my day was at my work because my friends will be jealous. And what I have to say to you about that is that just as earlier you heard, you're the product of your environment. If your friends are jealous of your successes, they're the wrong friends. Yeah, you need the right friends. You need people that support you and encourage you to be where you want to be. And I have one last thought that I want to leave with you. And I brought my life in the form of a puzzle. And it's not just my life, it's actually everybody's life. It's your life, it's all of our lives. And our lives are made up of a lot of interesting pieces. And we work really hard throughout our life to bring the pieces together. We go to the university, we get a degree, we get a job, we get married, we, or we don't. And we work really hard to put a lot of energy into bringing those pieces together. And the reality, as I told you in this presentation, is that you determine the frame to your life. It's strong and it's stable and it fits perfectly around the life that you created. Can you hold that for me? But the reality is, is that our life is made up of a lot of different pieces and all are very important. This is my dreams. This piece represents my dreams and my desires and I like to set big dreams and go for them. This piece, this piece, that's my family and friends that hold me accountable for reaching my dreams. They support me and they're not jealous of me. This piece, this piece represents all of the challenges that I've overcome to getting as far as I am today and I know that there will be other challenges. This piece, well, that piece is my health. Without my health, I couldn't reach any of the things that I wanted to accomplish. This piece, that's a secret. I'm going to keep that one just for myself. Maybe you have a piece like that too. And the reality is, is that we work really hard to bring all the pieces together and everything's going really well until this happens. A little setback, a little failure, something that catches us by surprise, something that we're not planning, comes into our life and it breaks all of those pieces apart. And so we get really busy change our perspective and start rearranging the pieces in our life. This little unexpected failure finds in a certain amount of time that it too 
fits securely and safely into the perfectly imperfect person that we are. There's also this. Hopefully yours is double so big as the little failures. These are the successes. These are the wins in life. These are the great things in life. But just as the failures and the setbacks, we have to find place in our life, room in our life for the good things. So we get busy rearranging our life again, and we find that we too have room for all of the successes in our life. And that's not yet the magic part. No matter how many successes and failures that you have in your life, you have the power, you have the control to create the frame around your life. And you'll find that that frame that you create, whoops, will always perfectly fit on your life. I wish you much success. Dr. Renee Moore. Woo!